Hey there, welcome back. Today's journey is going to have us installing a brand new dishwasher. I'm Kent and this is Oakley's DIY Home Renovation. So I got this dishwasher uh, on a Black Friday sale. It's a Kenmore. Uh, it's about 300 bucks off. Uh, they're really easy to put in. We're going to show you that. You should be able to do this fairly easy. Um, there's, there's three components. Uh, there's the water line. There's a drain hose and an electric cord. So there's not a lot to, to hook and unhook. Um, and you just got to get the old one out and put the new one in. So when I got this dishwasher, um, it made you buy uh, an install kit, which is basically the hose and the fittings, which is okay. This is a nice uh, stainless steel or braided hose. Um, you know, the dishwasher we have is only probably about a year old, but the thing is, is it was a cheap one and uh, my wife is always complaining about how it doesn't dry the dishes. We got to either air dry them or hand dry them. We got to turn things over to dump the water out and everything else. So I thought for Christmas I'd get her this nice new dishwasher, take that problem off her list and uh, put it in myself. Now uh, you can pay to have these installed but uh, it is kind of expensive. I'd looked up uh, Sears uh, in my area will deliver and install it for about 140 bucks. So uh, with that in mind, probably a couple hours and minimal tools, you can save yourself 140 bucks. So not very heavy. I picked this one up by myself, uh, picked it up out of my truck, brought it in here. Um, so they're not real heavy. Uh, but when you go to look to buy a dishwasher, the things you need to look for are the dimensions. First, uh, you need to measure what the opening is in your cabinet from the side to side and from the floor to the bottom of the uh, countertop. Now when you measure from the floor to the countertop you need to take the measurement from the highest point on the floor. And What I mean there is some floors are just tiled where up to the kitchen cabinets in that and when you take out the dishwasher you find out it's concrete or wood or whatever your, your subflooring is underneath there with no tile. You don't want to measure from there because it probably with the tile and the grout and that's probably another half an inch. So while you may, once you get it in there, have more room, you still got to get it through the same opening of where that tile is. So you want it from the tile to the bottom of the uh, countertop. And then, it, and again, on the countertop, like if you got a granite countertop, you'll have the top, which is probably about three quarters to an inch thick. And then they usually have a, a, a bullnose rollover on the end, that's another three quarters. So you want to measure from the, the lowest point on that countertop to make sure you're going to fit. And then side to side, you just measure from whatever the narrowest area is. Uh, this particular one required uh, uh, 24 inches wide and 34 inches high. And I'm about 24 and a half and 34 and a half inches, so it fits well. Other thing you want to look at uh, in these is they have uh, sound ratings. Some of them are very, very quiet. Um, others, as you may already have one, are loud and can't even hear the TV or them. So this particular model uh, come in, I believe, at like 53 decibels, which is, for all intents and purposes to me, is quite quiet. Um, to get the really, really quiet ones, I mean, are quite expensive. I mean, you can spend you know, twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars on a dishwasher. I didn't really feel that was feasible for the house that I'm in. I mean, if I had a custom home mansion, yeah, I'd have a two thousand dollar dishwasher in it. But the particular house I'm in, it really wasn't going to bring me back a return on my investment to have that big, expensive dishwasher. Now, this particular one, um, you know, they always say it was and now it is kind of thing. How much you want to believe? Uh, it's up to you. But they had it listed at six ninety nine, and I got it for three ninety nine. And I'll tell you, just before mix, making this video, I rechecked on the internet, and we're probably about two weeks past Black Friday, and they've upped it to four ninety nine. So I feel pretty happy. I got it for a hundred dollars less than what they uh, have on the website. Now with Sears, <coughs> excuse me, they have an outlet store. Uh, I don't know if they have one in your area or not. You can go online and look. Uh, basically, it's their scratch and dents is what I call it. The returns people didn't want or got scratched or dented in shipment and they can't sell it for brand new on the floor. And this particular model 
was like $20 cheaper at the scratch and dent than what I could get it for brand new. So, I mean, for 20 bucks, I get it brand new and I don't have to worry about things that are not there. I got, it, it comes in the original box, everything's good to go. Um, so, you have to kind of watch that scratch and dent stuff. Some of it's not a real good sale, and others are. Um, so, with that, uh, we'll get started. I'll, uh, next, we'll move on to show you where we're putting this and what we've got to do there. And we'll kind of, when we get ready to install this, I'll note the time and we'll see about how long it takes. I'm figuring probably two hours to do the whole thing. You can probably do it faster if you're not having to uh, tape it and move the camera around and, and all that sort of stuff. But we'll see. So let's go on to the kitchen and see where we're putting this new one. All right, so here we are in the kitchen. Uh, here's where the dishwasher is. It gets this wall and the cabinet and the uh, countertop. Now, on our particular countertop, as you can see, I don't have that bullnose rollover like you talk about. So um, I'll measure from the tile floor to the bottom here. And I know I've seen when they put this one in uh, that it's tiled all the way under. So I know measuring from here to here is a true accurate. So I'll take these measurements and read them out to you and then I'll uh, um, uh, take some still pic pictures of it and, and show you. So. Basically, you're going to take and measure from the floor to the underneath there, and I'm at 34 and 9 sixteenths. I need 34, so 9 sixteenths, I'm good. Uh, side to side, if you're having a little trouble or can't gauge just how far, open the door, measure. I am 24 and 5 sixteenths, and I need 24 inches, so I got plenty of room. So. Um, one thing I want to uh, kind of go back and talk to you about is, um, one, this video is not being sponsored by Sears, Kenmore, or anybody else. I like the product, so, and it's an easy, what I feel is a very easy DIY project, so I thought I would show you this, um, so you can do it yourself. The other thing I wanted to kind of mention is there's a website called honey.com, honey, like bee honey. Um, go there and uh, subscribe, um, register, it's free. It's a free website um, and it's a discount type website. Basically, uh, when you shop on Amazon or Lowe's or Home Depot or Sears like I did and you have this uh, app in your, or I shouldn't say app, but this uh, uh, website on your computer, when you go to check out, it'll pop up and scan for discounts. And if there is one, it'll apply it. And it did that in my case. So I got an extra $35 off by it scanning for that. So it was $3.99 is what they had a price. Then Honey come out with a $35 discount. Um, so with that, honey.com, try it out. What we're going to do first is I'm going to, there's a few dishes in here. I'm going to empty them out. I'm going to clean out from underneath the uh, cabinet here. Um, and then we'll pull this out and get started. Okay. We've got the cabinet cleaned out underneath. Uh, I've got a little bucket in over there in the back. That's the new next project. I got a leak where this uh, faucet is. But what I want to show you is what your hookups uh, are underneath here and really how simple it is. So over here to this side is a hole in the cabinet. Dishwasher's just right over there. Through there comes your water supply line, which goes right there. As you see, I have PEX. I don't have copper. Uh, for those of you who don't know what PEX is, uh, think of it as just plastic piping. Uh, it has good, good and bad. Um, you can decide for yourself. I particularly I like it. The one thing I really like about PEX is you see that's red. That means that's hot water. You go up here, you got red and blue, hot and cold. But the thing I really like is, as I'll show you in the garage, because we're going to turn the water off. Um, to the dishwasher is it goes to like a manifold with PEX I can actually choose what I want to shut off I actually have a shut off valve for just the dishwasher so it's really nice you can just shut off what you need and keep water to the rest of the house so moving on you can see back there is an electric cord that goes up and plugs in there and then the other thing is we have a hole there where the drain line comes in going to come over and hook into your dishwasher so basically you just have to unhook those 
Uh, there's some little brackets I'll show you that are screwed into the cabinet to keep the dishwasher from tipping. Pull this out, slap the new one in, and rehook it up. Now I have this little bucket here because when I undo that, I'm going to put it in here so if there's any water drainage, it flows down in here. As far as my uh, water valve, I'm going to shut it off here, but I'm also going to shut it off at the manifold. And again, there'll be some water in here, and I'll drain it into this little uh, glass jar. All right, so here we are out in the garage, and that panel right there hides the manifold. So let's pull that out and have you take a look. As you see, you got cold on one side, hot on the other, and they're all labeled. Uh, I'll give you a close up here shower, uh, sink, you know, kitchen, dishwasher, clothes washer, everything. So comes with this nice little handy wrench. Go to where it says dishwasher hot. I don't have a dishwasher cold. Uh, I got an ice maker cold. You just put this little key in here. Give it a twist up. And off it is. It's that simple. When we're done, we'll come back and turn it on. Get our tools together and go uh, untake, unhook everything and take the old one out. Okay, we're back. So, kind of go over the tools you'll, you'll need, and really it's fairly simple. You don't have to have a power drill like I have. You can just have a regular screwdriver, but you'll need a Phillips and a standard, number two. A crescent wrench, a set of pliers, channel locks, be nice. Here we go. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the um, drain line. It takes a standard screwdriver bit, um, and basically it's got a, a, a hose clamp on it. We'll just loosen the hose clamp, pull it off, make sure it drips into our little pan, and move on. Okay, you gotta make sure you have it in reverse. There, that's simple. All right, move that. save this hose clamp just in case we need it for the new one but probably won't. Other thing you might want to have is a towel because I'm sure we're not going to get every drop into this little bucket. So set that up out of the way. Uh, next thing we're going to take off is the uh, water line. Now I really don't, without running the, the machine, I don't have a way to really drain this line so it may spray a little bit I don't know but the other thing I'm gonna do first I'm just gonna reach up here and unplug it electricity and water don't mix very well all right that's unplugged now take a crescent wrench and you just put it on this fitting and it's righty tighty lefty loosey meaning you turn to the right to tighten it turn to the left to loosen it that's on most everything certain things uh, it's opposite but for this, it's righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Okay, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Get my towel up underneath here. And even if this wasn't hooked to uh, PEX and used to copper, it'd be the same thing. It'd have a screw-on valve just like this does. Not loose enough yet. I assume most people know how to use a crest wrench, but just in case those of you don't, this little knob here adjusts it in and out. So what I typically do is go wide, put it on the nut, get it good and square, then tighten it up and twist. Then loosen, readjust, tighten, and twist. Tighten, twist, loosen, just like that. And seat the nut all the way back into here. Don't have it at the tip because the 
the jaws will clamp a little narrower at the tip than they do at the base and you want a good firm seat on here uh, in case you're working with something that um, is corroded or rusted on if you don't have it real tight you'll round off the nut and then you got a bigger issue all right so that's loose enough to remove by hand and there let's get this electric cord of the uh, garbage disposal out of the way all right easy peasy so next we take out the screws uh, I'll show you over here we got to switch to our Phillips and we'll take the screws out for the um, uh, brackets now if you wanted you can see I don't have snap out hinges on my doors um, I have uh, they're, they're cheap cheap type hinges and so to take them out means unscrewing all this and really I just don't want to go through all that hassle so but if you want to you can if I had the nice fancy clip outs I'd unclip this and have them off because it's really simple and easy to do but in this case I don't so all right. okay see that screw right there there's a bracket right here there's one on this side too like I say it's to keep it from tipping uh, I've seen them have it on the sides and I've seen them have it on the top problem is if they have it on the top obviously you, you gotta you gotta drill into granite to get it to hold so this is a, a way better way for that situation now if you happen to have a, a, a wooden countertop or a, a, I don't want to say linoleum but a formica then yeah you could drill it in the top so and these are just little bitty screws I'll keep that for now so that's all done I did forget to mark what time it was, but uh, we'll say we start at 10 o'clock. So now everything is out. Um, you can see this is loose away from here. Um, what I'm going to do is just pull this out a little bit, then I'm going to open that door and shove them tubes through. Um, the, the lines obviously have to be long enough so that when you pull this out, you got room to get behind there and get them in. So I'm just going to see, pulls out very easy. These things are really light. Um, and what you'll see also when I pull this out is there'll be some insulation over it. Uh, it also helps with sound barrier. All right, so I got that. Let's put these tubes, there are all these pipings through the holes. out a little more I got a little mat down here in this particular case a little insulation thing kind of didn't stay on top not a big issue just fits right over there like that just like that and the new one will have it too let me turn this to the side so you can see back in there see uh, there you go there's your supply lines coming out of the walls now it's dirty under here and uh, I'm gonna clean that up wipe that all down and clean it out while I got it out um, you can see very very easy um, you know anybody could do this so husbands out there if you want to surprise your wife like I am get her dishwasher put it in while she's at work she comes home we got a new dishwasher put a Happy Merry Christmas, Happy Birthday, whatever inside. Uh, and make her happy. Wives, uh, I think this is a very easy project you could do. You could show your husbands, look, I went and spent your credit card, bought a new dishwasher, and put it in myself. You have the luxury of paying for it. Thank you. So uh, with that, uh, I'll get this out of here. We'll go out to the garage, unpack the new one, and continue on. All right, we're back out here in the garage. Uh, got the old one out. Uh, we're going to unbox this one. One thing I forgot to mention that you'll need is some way to cut this box. Now, uh, yes, you can open it from the top and lift it out, which is much harder. Or B, you've got a nice little dotted line all the way around the bottom. It says cut here. 
you cut that, you pull this off, it'll sit in a base. Um, if you want, I have a two wheel dolly. If you do, you can probably slide that under there and wheel this into where it needs to go, take it off the base and be ready to go. So let's uh, get this box cracked open here. Helps to have a nice sharp knife to go through this thick cardboard. We're all unhooked, and as I say, I haven't got that much of my knife exposed. So, so this is a nice little knife, has a nice little turn. I heard about this on uh, a YouTube channel I watch called DIY Home Reno Vision. Um, uses it all the time. I got it at Home Depot. It was like 10 bucks. Here's my hookup kit, which also has a braided hose, just like the other one. It has some extra fittings. Um, and we'll take this off, and I'm sure there's going to be some instructions under there we'll look at. Take our box. So, it did have these plastic guards around the corners here, so you didn't cut into anything. Also, you're cutting down low, you a board right there, so you're cutting into a board uh, all the way around and keeping from uh, cutting into your dishwasher itself. As I said, here's your insulation uh, sound barrier uh, material. Um, pull this back here, Take this off, I'll turn this around, we'll open the inside and show us where all the important stuff is. This right here, turn this around, on the base, see it's wrapped in plastic, there we go, this slides off. Off. Throw this over there out of the way. There's our energy guide. Uh, here's a protecting piece of film. Uh, with this particular unit, it has a heat dry system, so I don't have to worry about the uh, dishes not drying because it's going to provide heat to do so. So that goes in there. As you can see, with this down, it wants to tip. So we'll. Uh, Look and see what sort of system they have for us to attach it so it doesn't do that. Put this back in. Put the top drawer and voila. Instructions, clamps, brackets. Oh look, some free detergent. Our um, discharge hose. Take off the energy guide. We're all set. set these things to the side and we'll open the instructions and go from there. Okay. So, comes with these side brackets. Uh, looks like there's three of them. Um, and they'll fit on the side here. The other one's probably for the top, so if you have a way to attach it Above you can, but as I said, like with mine, I've got uh, granite countertops, and I'm not going to drill a hole in that to attach it there. And it also comes with some hose clamps and the screws, which are a little beefier screws than what the other one had, um, to attach stuff. Let's open this up. Come with the user guide, which I'll need to start. Uh, my wife probably knows how to use it without even seeing it, but. So we're out in the garage and I've got the dishwasher on its back. And one thing I forgot to tell you is, is they don't come with their own power cord. So you either have to buy one if you don't have one, or like I did, rob it off of the old one um, that I just took out over there. I happen to be lucky and mine is a plug-in type versus those that are a direct wire. So you'll access uh, both units from the front the same. You'll take this cover off of the front. You just slip a 
standard screwdriver in there and, and do a quarter turn and undoesn't that up comes the lid and then there's a cover right there over the wiring and it takes a torx wrench to get it off now if you don't have a torx wrench or looks like a star then you can use a small bladed standard screwdriver to get in there and undo it and so you'll take that screw off and you'll take the wire nuts off and then you'll just unhook the wires and pull it out mm -hmm. and then to put it in the new one it's just everything in reverse now the wire nuts um, if you don't have any you can either try and reuse the ones that are on there as long as they're not worn out or like i had some uh, in my garage so i just went and got the same kind uh, on the end of it it's had a p3 and i just matched that up with the um, assortment that i have so the wire will come up through this cutout in the plate there and if you want you can buy a grommet that goes in there it keeps the wire from rubbing against that edge and cutting it but the cord itself has a heavy uh, coating on the outside now what i'm showing you here are the wires there's a white wire a black wire and then there's the green one which is a ground wire that ground wire will hook underneath the clip right there and you'll screw it down to hold it tight to hook these up you hook the black to the black the white to the white and then again the ground hooks to that clamp now what i'm doing here is taking some wire cutters or i should say strippers and i'm going to cut off the end and pull some new wire out and then i'll twist the wire up be careful that it's um, it's stranded wire it's not solid so if you cut too deep you'll cut through the strands if you don't happen to have a pair of wire strippers you can use a utility knife again you just got to be careful that you don't cut through the strands of wire inside there and then once i've cut them to the length i want i'll take and just twist them up so they're in a nice tight bundle like so and then we feed it up through the hole in the plate And we start to attach the wires now you'll take your wire nuts and you'll attach the white wire from the dishwasher to the white wire of the cord um, you can give them a little twist to put them together or you can just put them side by side put the wire nut on and screw it down till it's tight um, one thing i don't show you here that you need to do is after you put the wire nut on there and you got it tight is you should pull on the individual wires and make sure they stay in there they pull apart then you'll need to either a redo it and get a better bite on it or b get a smaller wire nut so now we're hooking the black to the black same fashion put the wire nut on screw it on make sure it's good and tight Then next we'll hook up the ground wire what you'll need to do is take your screwdriver and loosen that nut that it's going to go under and you'll put the wire the bare wire underneath that little clip like we're showing here then you'll take your screwdriver and you'll tighten that wire nut down until it's good and tight. And now you have your power cord hooked up. Then the next thing you'll need to do is put the cover back over that. But before you do that, you'll need to take those wires and kind of um, bend them around so that they're all underneath that cover and sitting flat because you want that cover to go on um, flat so that when you screw in the screw that holds it down it's not binding up on any of the wires you see me here i'm turning the wires back in so that they'll sit underneath the cap and then pushing it down now i'm taking the torque screw and my wrench and tightening the screw up nice and tight And 
and that's all you've got to do. So now you've got the electrical part hooked up. Now the next thing we're going to do is hook up the drain hose and the water line. Now the drain hose extra length comes with the machine and you'll push it into the other the end with no coupling on it. You'll push into the black hose and there's a, a ridge on the end of that or a lip on the end of that plastic hose that tells you when you've got it pushed all the way in. And then your gray end that I'm holding now will go into whatever drain uh, mechanism you have on your sink. And in my case, it'll plug into the garbage disposal. So now we're going to work on hooking up the water line. That blue fitting is plastic, so you need to be careful and not tighten it down too tight when you're doing it. But then the kit comes a 90 that you'll need to hook onto it. And then the steel braided hose will hook to it. Now, there's no need for any taping or anything, Teflon tape on those threads. Those are compression fittings. And in fact, it says right in the directions, no Teflon tape. And so you'll just screw that on really tight um, using a wrench. Now, I just remembered I forgot to put on the clamp that holds that hose there. So I'm taking it back out. And the clamps are supplied. There's two different ones. There's a red and a green. And it tells you which ones to use. Uh, in this case, you use the green. You take your pair of pliers. It's a spring-loaded clamp. And you'll grab each end of the clamp and give it a squeeze, and it opens it up. And you open it up, push it over the tube, and again, push the tube back in until that ridge stops right at the end of the fitting. And then you'll take your clamp, slide it up, and then make it real easy. It says clamp here on the rubber. So you'll take your pliers, spread the clamp open, feed it down over that black rubber uh, fitting, and, we're in, and then release where it says clamp here. And now you've got it all fixed. It's attached and good to go. Nothing else is needed. Now... When we get this all done, we'll go back and get the water line hooked up. Just making sure I got the clamp in the right spot. And that's good and tight. And we're all set. Now, back to the water line. I'm grabbing that 90 that came with it. And we're going to use a crescent wrench um, to get the hose on there. What you need to do is hand tighten it first it's got compression fittings in there hand tighten as much as you can in this case i'm using pliers but crescent wrench pliers um, and you just tighten it down and it gets you just twist it till it's tight and won't move anymore and then when you're done with that take the hose and put it under the drain line um, so it doesn't get in the way when you put it back in and then you hand tighten that on and then take the pliers and again you tighten this up but be careful don't over tighten or you're liable to crack or break that plastic fitting later we'll do a leak test and if it's leaking we can tighten it up some more Now that that's good and tight, the next thing we'll do is take this into the kitchen. So here we are in the kitchen. I've got the dishwasher sitting there. Um, and I took some masking tape and just taped around the, the cord, the drain pipe, and the water line. And taped them up on top of the unit so they didn't drag behind me as I was bringing it into the house. And what you'll do is, is you'll feed the, the cord, the water hose, and the drain pipe back through your cabinet holes, um, pull them through, you'll slide the dishwasher in, you'll pull on those cords a little more until you get it all pushed in and they're pulled back as much as you can. Now what I'm showing you here are the uh, clips or brackets that will mount on it and that you'll screw into your cabinet so that when you open the door it doesn't tip. Now it comes with brackets that you can fit on top 
but I'm not going to use them because I have a granite. If you have a wooden countertop or a Formica type countertop, then you would use those to screw it into the countertop to keep it from tipping. Now what we're going to do is take the tape off the top and off of our cord, hose, and drain tube so we can get them into the holes in the cabinet. So as you can see so far, this has been relatively easy. Um, you can do it yourself. Just think, you're going to pay somebody $140 to come out and do what I'm doing here. So the next thing we're going to do is take the drain tube and put it through the opening. And that gray uh, fitting is what will fit into the garbage disposal. Put that in. Next, we're going to do the electrical cord and then the water hose or the water line. Now, the water line, I have plenty extra uh, left over, um, and I'll coil that up under the sink once I get it all done to keep it out of the way. So we open up the cabinet here, pull the water line through. Okay, we got the water line fed through, and then next will be the electrical cord, but the electrical cord isn't long enough. So what I'm going to have to do is push the dishwasher into the cabinet a little ways so that I can get the electrical cord through the hole back there. And then I can finish installing the dishwasher back into the cabinet. Now, as you're putting that dishwasher in, all your hose and lines and everything should be under the feet of the dishwasher. And here I was putting the cord back under because it was outside of it. And then there's little leveling feet on there. There's four of them, one at each corner that we'll deal with next. So we open the cabinet, pull on our drain line, our cord, electrical cord, and our water line. Push it in a little bit more. Now one thing to note as you're doing this is you don't want to pull on the electrical cord real hard. Um, I made the mistake of doing that, and later in the video I find out that I have no power. And I have to go back under and rewire it. But we're pushing it in. Pull the slack of your cords out so they don't get bunched up in the back. And push it in a little further. And just keep doing this until you get it pushed in all the way like it's supposed to be. Now, in my case here, I'm looking under to make sure the cords are okay and the drain hose and everything. But the dishwasher is a little too high. I mean, it fits in there, but it's just starting to rub underneath the cabinet. So what we'll do is we'll pull this back out. The little leveling feet on there will take a crescent wrench uh, and shorten those. Um, a couple of them are loose enough you could do it by hand. Then we'll push it back in, test it, see if it fits okay. Because you got to give yourself enough room, remember, for the insulation to go over the top of it. So now we're going to check the level and plumb. What I'm doing here is checking plumb. So you want it straight up and down. And what I'm finding out is it's tipped back a little bit. And so I need to adjust the feet. And when I check the level on the top, it too is out and I need to adjust it. But you just pull the dishwasher out and you adjust the feet by turning them up or down to get it to where you need it to. And then you'll push it back in, put the level back on, and see if you're plumb and level. If not, you just keep repeating that process until you get it to where you need it. Now, it may take a few minutes or so to do that, but it's okay. And the other thing you want to make sure is, is when you're doing this, that it doesn't teeter-totter back and forth. If it does, it means one of the legs is way shorter than the other three and so what you need to do is pull this out pull out the dishwasher and screw that particular leg down until it just touches the floor and then just kind of give a little push on the dishwasher and make sure it's good and flat now what i didn't show you and i'm lucky is my floor is level what you should do is take the level inside the cabinet there and check your flooring check it uh, parallel to the wall and perpendicular to the wall to see if you're level. Because if you are, great. You can do all your leveling out here, and when you push it in, you know 
that the whole thing is level. Otherwise, it makes it a little harder to get it level. You kind of have to push it in, figure out what's on level, pull it out, adjust, push it in, in and out, in and out, and it'll take you a little bit more time. So here I'm loosening the uh, legs. Uh, this particular one had a little too tight and had to use the crescent wrench on it to get it to work. But we'll get that uh, set. And then the other side the same way. And then we'll push this all back in. And we'll check the level. Now you'll see me take that level and put it on there. And then I'll turn the level 180 degrees. And the reason is, is that bubble is off just a hair from one way to the other. And so I keep doing that and try and split the middle and make sure it's good and plumb. So it takes a little bit of time to do this, uh, but again, it's not hard and it's important to get this level because if you don't, your water's not going to drain properly out of the dishwasher. So the next thing we're going to do is we're checking the plumb. You see, I'll turn it the other direction there. Make sure it's good that way. I've already checked the top part. It's nice and level. So before we push it in, the next thing we have to do is put these little braces on to keep it from tipping. And there's little uh, tabs on the ends that you'll twist. One will be one direction, the other will be the other direction. It doesn't matter, and it locks it in. And I'll show you here in a minute how it fits in there. But there'll be one on each side. Uh, like I say, I've got a granite countertop, so I won't use the top mounting uh, brackets. But if you happen to have a wooden countertop or Formica, then you could mount it that way also. All right, now... There's slots at the bottom and at the top, and you want them in the top. They should just slide right in there, uh, and you put one on each side, as I'm showing you here. And I'll give you a close-up. There's a little, there's holes in there, and depending on whether you have a plastic tub or a metal tub will determine where you snap that bracket off to screw it in. There's two score lines on each bracket, as I'll show you here. And like I say, you'll, depending on which tub you have, I happen to have plastic, you will determine which one of those tabs you snap off. In my case, I'm going to snap the one closest uh, to the front door um, to fit the screws in. Now, another note is, is you need to maybe pre-drill those holes into your cabinet because the screws going in there are pretty big and you don't want to split your cabinet. So I'm using the pliers here to twist the tabs each direction, making sure it's tight. And then we're gonna, when we get that all done, we'll push that in and we'll check and see which holes need to be used to mount it. Now we're not gonna mount it just yet because we gotta still hook up our electric, our drain pipe, and our water line before we do that. Because if something's wrong, I don't wanna have to undo all them screws Pull it back out to do it. Okay, now we're doing the same thing to the other side. We'll put the bracket in uh, in the same hole and we'll twist the tabs so that it fits nice and tight. Now that that's done, then we'll push this in and we'll also, and we're going to check it one more time for plumb and level. And then also you need to pull on your cords and your hose and your drain line and make sure they're not bunching up behind there so that you can get it pushed all the way back in where it needs to go. And that's what I'm doing here. As you see, it gets to, it'll go in a little bit further by doing so. I'm checking the level, make sure it's good. And it is. Now I'm going to check the plumb. And again, I rotated 180 and it's good. I like where it's sitting. So now what we're going to do is make sure it's fitted in there just like we want it. And then we're going to open the door and then we're going to see which screw holes it is that we're going to use to attach it to the cabinet. Now in my case I got lucky in that the old brackets were in the same place as the new ones so I don't have to pre-drill any holes to put the screws in. And then once you've determined which hole it is you're going to use, then you can go and determine which score line it is you're going to break the brace off at so that it doesn't stick out in front of your cabinet. Now what I'll show you next 
is the screw hole that I'm actually going to be using to uh, attach this to the cabinets. And then you'll be able to see which score line it is that you have to break the brace off at. It's sticking out just a little too far yet. I've got to push it in just a little bit more to make sure I've got it in the right place. And now we're ready to break the tabs off. And you just grab the, at the score line with the pliers and just bend back and forth. And it's tight at first, then all of a sudden it'll start to get loose and be easier to do. And then you use your other hand to hold the rest of it uh, steady so you don't bend more than what you need to. And then next thing you know, it just snaps off. And then you're all set. And you do the same thing for the other side. Now that we've got that done, we're going to test the spring tension on the door. As you see there, you actually have to push, push on the door to get it down. And when you release it, it doesn't sling back up. And that's good. You don't want it so tight that it slings, it slams back up, but you don't want it so loose that it falls down. How you adjust that is, is there's springs at the bottom on each side. And they fit, there's a bunch of holes drilled down there. And you just pull the spring out and push it back into another hole and retest and see if that's what you like. And you just do that until you get the spring tension like you want. And remember, you'll need to do that on both sides because there's a spring on each side. So now we've got it in the cabinet where we want. It's time now to pull it back out, hopefully for the last time. And as you see, we don't have our insulation wrapped around it. And of all of this, this is probably going to be the hardest, unless you've got a lot of extra room around the sides and top of your dishwasher from your cabinets. But what you'll need to do is pull it out like we've done and put your um, insulation on there. In this case, I have the, the drain lines too tight, so I'm pushing some of it back through so I can pull the dishwasher out more to get the insulation put on there. And there's, it fits on there, and you can see, and I'll show you here in a minute, there's kind of a little area um, where there's a metal piece that it doesn't need to go in front of. So what you'll do is, is you'll just have to compress the sides of the insulation and push it into the opening. Um, and you just have to work at it. Uh, you may have to do it a little bit side to side um, to get it in. And then you have to readjust and, and get it in there just right. But you want to make sure that you've got it where it needs to be. Here I'm going to show you. Right there is where it needs to be fitting. You don't want it to fit in front of that. And you don't want it to fit too far in back of that. So we're just about done. I'm getting the last little bit of it pushed in. Making sure it's in the right spot before I finish pushing the dishwasher back into the opening. And there we are. We've got it in. We're going to get pushed in where we want. We're going to have to pull on the drain line again because it's holding us up. It's binding up in the back of it, not letting me push it in any further. And once I have that done, we're ready to hook up our water line, our drain line, and our electric. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hook up our water line. And i got more water line than I need, so I'll coil it up so it's in the back and out of the way. But you'll just take your fitting and screw it on to the uh, water line that's coming out of your cabinet wall. And you'll just put it on hand tight to start. Make sure you don't cross thread it. And then once you've got that done, you'll take your crescent wrench and you'll tighten it up. Now get it tight, but don't over tighten just yet. We'll leak test a little bit later and see if it leaks. And if it does, we'll tighten it a little more. If not, then we've got it just like we want it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to hook up our drain line. And we'll need that other little clamp that came with it. It was a red one. And so we'll feed it up over that cross pipe. And the gray fitting will go onto the garbage disposal. Now, in my case, I didn't have to cut that tubing. Uh, in some applications, you have to. There's the clamp. 
And again, you'll use your pliers, grab a hold of each side, squeeze the pliers, which opens it up. And then you'll put it over the tubing. And again, it says right on that gray tubing, clamp here. So they make it pretty idiot proof, if you will, um, for installation. So you'll pull it over, you'll push it onto the garbage disposal real tight. You'll take your pliers and fix the clamp. Now, we've got that done. The next thing we'll do will be to plug in the electric. Now we can get the electric cord plugged in and get electricity to this. And as I told you before, uh, when I plugged it in, I had pulled on them cords so much that I unhooked it from underneath. And off camera, I had to go under there and rehook it up. So now that I got that done, I've got power to the unit. I've gone out in the garage and I've turned the water back on and I'm looking for leaks. And I did have a leak right there where the water line hooks into the uh, supply line out of the cabinet. And all I did was just tighten it up a little more with a crescent wrench and check for any leakage and I didn't have any. Now, what you need to do is run the whole uh, system through at least a cycle. And so what I did was is I just ran it through a 17 minute rinse cycle. And while that's going, I let it go for a little bit. I started checking for more leaks. And not only do you need to look for the leaks inside the cabinet, but you need to make sure you look underneath the dishwasher. And I looked several times to just be sure that I didn't have any, any leaks. Because the last thing I want to do is find out that I got a leak when I'm not home and she's running a dishwasher and I get a call saying it's leaking and there's nothing I can do because I'm at work. So we'll wait till the rinse cycle's done and then we'll finish this up. So right now I'm getting ready to check with the flashlight for leaks underneath and inside the cabinet. And I don't see any leaks. There's no water dripping anywhere. There's no water in the back. So I'm happy about that. Now we'll check inside the cabinet. And there's no drips or water on the fitting. There's no drips or water on the feeding or on the uh, drain tube. One thing I'm going to do because I did have a leak is I'm going to dry that fitting off with a paper towel. And then I'm going to take a dry paper towel and wipe around that fitting. And here I'm showing you it's dry. And now I'm going to wrap it around there and look for leaks. And if there's a leak, it'll be wet. And in this case, I have no leaks and the paper towel's dry. So, only thing left to do is wait for this to finish and then go back and screw in the brackets so it doesn't tip and the installation will be complete. So here we are. We've got about less than a minute left in the cycle before we can open it up and put the screws in. It's finished now. So we open the door up and you see... I got lucky and the screw holes that were in there before match up to where I need to put my screws. So I'm just going to take my uh, electric screwdriver and put them screws in and make sure they're good and tight on each side. And then the only thing that's left to do is that bottom front panel hasn't been put on yet. And you'll just slide it up underneath the front end of it and you'll take your standard screwdriver and you'll make a quarter turn on those, those nuts and it locks it in place. Here we're getting the other side done. Shutting the door, no, no movement, no rocking. And one other thing we need to do is it comes wrapped. Now the front of this comes with a plastic uh, cover on the stainless steel part to protect it during shipping. And you just grab the edges and peel it up until you get it all off. Uh, and then after that, the only thing left to do is to put the bottom front cover on. Uh, like we said, you put it under there. You put your standard screwdriver in the slots. Make a quarter turn on each side. It locks it in. And you're all done. Now, total time from start to finish, including um, off camera and mistakes and everything, it took me about three hours, um, which isn't bad. So... 
you read the instructions, don't have to tape it. I'm sure you could get this done easily in two hours. Okay, it's all done. Everything's finished, no leaks. Uh, these are the tools we used, I'll go over them. Um, tape measure, not necessarily, because uh, you should have pre-measured before you bought. Uh, some masking tape or duct tape. Um, small level, this is a torpedo level. If you can, wire strippers, if not, um, a knife, uh, uh, utility knife, with a nice sharp blade, you can do the same, just a little harder. Uh, a pair of pliers, I actually got these out and really probably didn't need them. I could do everything with just a standard set of pliers, a standard screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, a T20 Torx wrench if you have it. If you don't, then what you'll need to do is get a narrower blade uh, a narrower blade on your uh, standard screwdriver to fit in there and undo it. A crescent wrench and a light. Now I had a power driver for screws. If you don't have one, not a big deal. You can do it with hand screws. You just need to be able to have um, a Phillips and a standard uh, bit. So they had a few leftover parts. These here were for the brackets if it was an undermount uh, system, which it wasn't, so don't need those. These are some fittings that were left over I didn't need to use. Okay, so let's recap. Um, first, take out the old one. Unplug, unplug the electrical cord, turn the water off, undo your drain lines, undo your water line, pull out the old one, take it to your garage or wherever. If you don't have a power cord and it's a and you have an outlet, use the power cord, take the power cord off the old one, uh, the new one, get it out of the box, obviously, cut around the bottom, take it out, uh, roll it on its back, hook up your drain hose, your water line, and your power cord, take it into your uh, kitchen, uh, put your cords through the holes through the cabinets, get it set level and plumb, get your insulation put over it, put it back in, plug it in, hook up your drain line, hook up your water line, turn your water back on, check for leaks, no leaks, look underneath with the flashlight, underneath with the flashlight for leaks, feel for leaks, um, run a cycle, short cycle, I ran a 17 minute rinse cycle, Look for leaks while it's running, no leaks, you're good to go. Ready to wash. Well, no, we've got one step. You gotta screw it in, make sure it doesn't tip. Now what we didn't have to do, and you may have to, is adjust the tension spring on your door. If the door flops open, you'll need to tighten that up, but it worked just beautiful on this one, so I didn't have to do anything. And you're all set. Now, really the only thing you gotta do is get rid of the old one. So what am I gonna do? I'm either A, going to set it out for the trash people, or B, I'll have my wife put it on the Facebook thing, and somebody wants it for free, they can have it. So, with that, hope you found this a little informative, a little entertaining, uh, inspiring, because uh, I definitely think just about anybody could put one of these in. Uh, it's taken me, we're about three hours and 12 minutes um, from start to finish. So I think easily, uh, with not having to film and kind of reading through the instructions, uh, unlike what I did, uh, you could easily probably have this in and done in two hours. So it's pretty good. Two hours. I mean, you know, you saved 140 bucks. I mean, somebody's getting $70 an hour to come in and hook this up, and it's very simple. So with that, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up down below. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon next to it so you can be notified when the next video comes out. And until then, we'll see you on the next video.